Without a doubt, when you hear phrases like they keep the bulk of their wealth in a private Swiss bank account or the most important funds are hidden in a vault in Switzerland, you immediately get images of secret international dealings between the world's clandestine financiers, intergovernmental espionage and maybe a splash of Hollywood magic. However, the stone-cold truth is that Swiss banking as an institution is a very real, non-Tinseltown reality that holds billions, or more likely trillions, in hidden assets and priceless artifacts from history for the world's wealthiest and most elite patrons. In today's video at Old Money Luxury, we'll pull back the curtain on the extremely well-known yet highly secretive world of Swiss banking. First, we'll cover how it all started back in the 1700s to help finance Europe's wars and hide the billions made in profit from conflict. Then we'll detail exactly why the world's old money elite would want to hide their most precious items and financial earnings in this majestic Alpine country. Finally, we'll bring you up to speed on the future of Swiss accounts and private banking overall, as Switzerland has been presented with a host of new global rival locations for stashing the secret wealth of the world's richest, as we describe, the hidden world of Swiss banking. If you've clicked on this video, the first question I'm sure you've been itching to ask is, why have the world's elite chosen Switzerland for their secret banking? Indeed, Switzerland's storied political neutrality serves as the keystone in its allure as a financial refuge. The nation's relatively unwavering political climate, further buttressed by a global reputation for diplomatic even-handedness, magnetizes high net worth individuals and corporations in search of a sanctuary for their financial reserves. This gravitational pull was palpable in the financial markets as recently as last February, as the Swiss franc appreciated 5% against the euro within two weeks following Russia's military attack on Ukraine. But the history of Swiss banking confidentiality dates back to the early 18th century and finds its roots in safeguarding the affluent coffers of European financial elites. The enigma of why Switzerland emerged as the epicenter for this clandestine service, rather than other nations, is indeed a subject of curiosity. Geographically and politically well situated amid the Alps, the country offered defensible terrain and a decentralized governance model that proved conducive to complex banking operations. Starting things off, in 1713, the Great Council of Geneva prohibited divulging any financial information concerning Europe's high society a milestone in Swiss financial discretion. This council thus emerged with a charter focused on the economic vitality of its jurisdiction, positioning it well to enact stringent confidentiality regulations. The 18th century stage also saw Switzerland serve as a facilitator of monumental transactions across the European continent. During the War of Spanish Succession, for instance, the country's neutrality allowed France and the Grand Alliance to conduct secure and confidential financial settlements, Thus, in the theatre of mergers and acquisitions, Swiss banks proved instrumental in fusing commercial empires, particularly in the New World. Arch enemies on political and military battlefields, Britain and France nonetheless found Swiss financial institutions to be neutral arbitrators, holding their capital in escrow and assisting in the consummation of their commercial deals. And when it came to sovereign debt, Switzerland was the issuer of choice. Nations like Austria, perennially embattled with the Ottoman Empire, benefited from floating bonds in Swiss francs, attracted by the currency's stability and Switzerland's impartial status. By the 1780s, Swiss banks pioneered deposit insurance, adding another layer to their profile as secure repositories for wealth. This groundbreaking initiative ameliorated investor concerns about financial risks, reinforcing the country as the preferred destination for capital. Furthermore, in the aftermath of the Napoleonic Wars, the 1815 Congress of Vienna actually institutionalized Switzerland's neutrality, thus magnetizing a torrent of capital to its coffers. Even back then, major European powers saw in Switzerland a valuable buffer state, and its diplomatic aloofness, compounded by its geographic insularity, rendered it an obvious choice for formalized neutrality. This enhanced the nation's credentials as a repository for international assets. However, the truly seismic event that lurched Switzerland into the modern age as the home of secret wealth was the banking law of 1934. This legislative sleight of hand made official what had long been practiced. The non-disclosure of client data became a federal offense. This decree, 
twinned with a durable currency and a persistent neutral status, stimulated an influx of capital into Swiss private vaults. Quickly thereafter, in the 1940s, the advent of numbered accounts introduced a lasting bedrock principle in global private banking. While World War II saw Swiss banks in controversial affiliations with Axis powers, their luster as private banking centers remained undiminished in the post-war era. Case in point, Wegelin and Company, established in 1741 and Switzerland's oldest private bank, found itself the target of a forceful US government action. In 2013, the institution conceded to aiding affluent Americans in obscuring their incomes in concealed offshore portfolios. Faced with a $74 million penalty, Wegelin ceased operations. And during the tempestuous years of the Cold War, Swiss financial institutions became the vaults of choice for an array of international figures, reinforcing Switzerland's standing as an impervious financial sanctuary. Their unflinching commitment to client confidentiality drew an eclectic clientele ranging from political leaders to organizations desiring unparalleled asset protection. A standout example from this period is former Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos, who is said to have stashed billions in Swiss accounts, later ensnared in legal battles and restitution initiatives. The Swiss vaults also discreetly harbored assets for other global strongmen and political luminaries of the time. Simultaneously, these banks became the repository for the imperiled assets of Holocaust victims, notably European Jews who funneled their resources into Swiss coffers in the 1930s. The post-war years would witness an intensified quest to reclaim dormant accounts, especially those linked to Holocaust victims, sparking a wave of litigation and settlements in the 1990s. Recently, faced with international scrutiny and legal pressures, the Swiss financial landscape has undergone substantial recalibrations. Emblematic of this is the experience of banking giants UBS and Credit Suisse. This spurred Switzerland to unseal account details concerning US taxpayers from 2014, and in the same year, the country adopted the Common Reporting Standard, or CRS, along with 50 other nations, ushering in an era of increased transparency within its vaunted banking sector. Thus, Swiss banking confidentiality, molded by an array of historical benchmarks and occurrences, has continued to adapt and evolve. Of course, the institution has not been without its controversies and ethical dilemmas, yet it remains a bulwark in the financial sphere, its mystique arguably undiminished. All right, so we've established that a specific number of legislative and geopolitical chess moves helped build Switzerland into the ideal choice for the world's elite to stash their cash. However, your next query is likely, why do private citizens and old money families love Swiss banking so much? Therein lies our next investigation. You see, Swiss private banking has long been a lodestone for old money, drawing patrons with its ironclad guarantees of privacy, tailored exclusivity and currency stability. These potent allurements have continually positioned Switzerland as the go-to sanctuary for affluent individuals seeking both asset protection and growth. First, privacy remains the bedrock of Swiss private banking. While the aforementioned banking law of 1934 is well known, other legislative frameworks fortify this heritage. The 2018 Swiss Financial Services Act further tightens the circle of confidentiality by imposing stringent regulations on how financial institutions can share client data with foreign entities. Both of these acts particularly benefit the ultra-rich, reinforcing layers of impenetrable discretion around their financial affairs. The other pillar of Swiss banking opulence is its exclusivity, targeting a clientele of high net worth individuals. Clients are pampered with an array of personalized services, from private advisories to bespoke asset management and investment planning. All these services are meted out by an elite cadre of Swiss bankers, each a maestro in the symphony of wealth management. However, access to the world's most exclusive and secretive banking services obviously leads to some of society's more unscrupulous characters to avail themselves of Switzerland's services, ushering in a clientele that some of the more morally ambiguous bankers are happy to aid in their pursuit of unending wealth. This darker facet was vividly portrayed in the 2013 film The Wolf of Wall Street, where Leonardo DiCaprio's character, based on the real-life Jordan Belfort, engaged in financial subterfuge to shield ill-gotten wealth. Union Bancaire Privy, or UBP, featured prominently in Belfort's actual escapades, 
Belfort, who at the time was facing 22 months in prison for his financial crimes, utilized UBP's services to clandestinely transfer cash from the US to Switzerland, going to the extent of physically strapping money to couriers, as shown in the film. In one particularly audacious move, UBP even facilitated the withdrawal of untraceable gold bars valued at over $50 million for two US clients, effectively helping Belfort and his cohorts elude the IRS set. Against this backdrop of both grandeur and potential ethical flexibility are the Swiss bank relationship managers. These professionals act as the vanguards and caretakers of individualized financial counsel. They are not mere functionaries in a banking institution, they are essential players in an elaborate dance of fiscal strategy and execution. These experts are invested with the monumental task of deeply comprehending the financial yearnings of their clients. In this capacity, they yield specialized advice, maneuvering investment portfolios with surgical precision. They operate as the nerve center of this rarefied ecosystem, charged with perpetuating a rigorous standard of financial sagacity, and concurrently, fostering client relationships that stand the test of time. Bank Pictet and CSA stands as a paragon in this elite world, embodying the peak of Swiss prudence and financial acumen. Operating over a span of more than two centuries, this venerable institution has granted admission to its inner sanctum sparingly, elevating a mere 43 individuals to the exalted rank of managing partner in its long and illustrious history. Additionally, the Swiss heritage of airtight confidentiality and individualized service extends even to the realm of physical security, vividly immortalized in other films. For instance, the 1999 movie Entrapment showcased laser-guarded Swiss vaults that only the most skilled could penetrate. Likewise, the 1964 classic Goldfinger featured James Bond foiling a plot to contaminate the United States bullion depository, with the character of Auric Goldfinger having Swiss bank accounts central to his schemes. These cinematic moments are emblematic of how Swiss bank vaults have come to epitomize the very pinnacle of security and discretion. Lastly, in an increasingly volatile global landscape, where economies are prone to shocks from trade wars, actual wars, and unforeseen pandemics, the Swiss franc emerges as a fortress of fiscal steadiness. For high net worth individuals, the virtues of the Swiss franc go beyond its mere stability. Its strength allows for diversification away from riskier assets, providing a counterbalance in a multi-currency portfolio. Overseen by the Swiss National Bank's astute monetary policies, which include rigorous interest rate management and judicious foreign exchange operations, the Swiss franc enjoys a stability that is almost unparalleled on the global stage. Thus, even during periods of international economic tumult, the currency has often defied trends, either holding its ground or even appreciating in value. This resilience is no accident but the outcome of meticulous planning and a commitment to macroeconomic stability by Swiss authorities. In essence, the Swiss franc acts as a financial stronghold, a place where wealth isn't just stored but also has the potential for growth, all while being insulated from the turbulence that afflicts other currencies and asset classes. However, in a world shifting toward transparency and digitization, Swiss private banking, once the sine qua non of discretion and exclusivity, now faces questions about its modernity. This gilded bastion of old-world banking elegance finds itself confronting regulatory wins, notably the Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act and directives from the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, more commonly known as the OECD. The Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act, a US legislation, mandates Swiss banks to unmask American account holders, essentially dismantling the hallowed veil of secrecy for these clients. Consequently, the impact on American old money families has been palpable. The once unquestioned Swiss stronghold on confidentiality now seems to have developed chinks in its armor. The stigma of potential tax evasion or financial obscurity has somewhat dimmed Switzerland's luster for these storied wealth dynasties. Similarly, OECD guidelines aimed at curbing tax evasion through global cooperation further prod Swiss discretion into the open. These regulations have compelled Swiss banks to be more forthcoming with tax-related data, thereby narrowing the gaps through which the ultra-rich could slip unnoticed. Faced with these challenges, Switzerland finds itself in a rivalry with emergent financial titans like Singapore, Dubai and Hong Kong. Singapore's meteoric ascent to the third spot on the global financial hierarchy 
just behind New York and London, is not a stroke of serendipity, but a concerted state endeavor. With its well-regarded political stability and a focus on fintech innovation, Singapore has transformed itself into a sanctuary for wealthy individuals and family offices. The city-state has also embraced transparency while providing tax-friendly regimes, thereby aligning modern wealth management practices with international regulations. Dubai, on the other hand, has embraced its role as the playground for nouveau riche affluence with gusto. Whereas Switzerland may offer tradition and long-standing expertise, Dubai represents a different allure, extravagance, high yields, and relative regulatory leniency. Its free economic zones offer beneficial tax conditions, and its openness to global capital makes it an attractive alternative. In contrast to the hush-hush environs of Swiss vaults, Dubai's ostentation offers a wholly different, but increasingly sought-after form of financial sanctuary. And amid the evolving landscape of global finance, Hong Kong remains a compelling player, despite its hurdles. Positioned strategically near China's booming economic machine, it offers a rich financial infrastructure and serves as a confluence of Eastern and Western financial philosophies. Yet it is not immune to the questions of privacy and political stability, with its democratic protests garnering worldwide attention. Complicating matters further for Switzerland is its competitors' relentless drive toward financial technology, an arena where Hong Kong, along with Singapore, is striving to be a world leader. Both regions are vigorously wooing fintech startups and positioning themselves as fintech epicenters, a move that makes the traditionally discreet Swiss banks appear a touch anachronistic. Indeed, Switzerland is at a juncture where emerging technologies are significantly influencing its venerable banking sector. Blockchain technology, often touted as the disruptor of modern finance, poses a dual challenge and opportunity. It has the capacity to upend how financial transactions are carried out, diminishing the role of traditional banking intermediaries. But at the same time, Swiss banks have an opportunity to incorporate blockchain to enhance security and transaction efficiency, thereby retaining their cachet among clientele seeking cutting-edge services alongside traditional discretion. Similarly, fintech startups are remapping the topography of financial services. With a focus on streamlining operations and lowering costs, fintech companies employ sophisticated algorithms and machine learning tools to offer an efficient, cost-effective banking experience. Their agility and technological prowess present a stark contrast to Switzerland's grand banking halls and personalized human advice. Here again, Swiss banks must decide how to reconcile their storied traditions with a wave of automation and data analytics that offer convenience and lower costs. Switzerland, then, is at a crossroads. Its traditions of privacy and expert financial management are being tested against a backdrop of increasing transparency and shifting global dynamics. With emergent rivals offering different flavors of financial stability and opulence, Swiss banking's golden halo has arguably begun to flicker. And now, we'd like to see you in the comments. Up to this point, we've covered quite a few different aspects of the hidden world of the wealthy. We've discussed trust funds, how monarchies actually make money, and now Swiss banking. What's another topic about the hidden finances of the wealthy you'd like us to cover? We're always striving to make content that appeals to you. And so we'll be looking forward to your response below this video. With that said, thanks again for joining us for another episode of Old Money Luxury, and cheers. Until next time.